Let's learn 10 more advanced English words. This is video number seven. Let's get started. The first word is mediocre. Mediocre. Mediocre means average, right in the middle, not good and not bad. But actually, most of the time when people use mediocre, what they mean is something is not so good. For example, you can say the food in that restaurant is mediocre. Or you can say he's a mediocre student. Number two, famished. Famished means very hungry, extremely hungry. Number three, prompt. Prompt. When you do something promptly, you do it immediately without delay. So prompt means immediate. Number four, bland. Bland. When something is bland, it's boring. And usually it means it doesn't have any flavor. So if your soup is bland, Maybe you will put some spices in it or some salt. Number five, filthy. Filthy. Filthy means very dirty. Number six, reluctant. Reluctant. If you are reluctant to do something, it means you're not interested in doing it. You're unwilling and you hesitate. So for example, have you ever done something but you really didn't want to do it, but you did it anyway? You did it reluctantly, without really wanting to do it. Number seven, remote. Remote. Remote means distant or very far away, usually very far away from the center. For example, a little village somewhere far away can be remote. And you probably know the word remote control. A remote control can control your television, for example, from a distance. There's a second meaning for the word remote. Remote also means there's a small chance of something happening. So you can say, today there is a remote chance for rain. Number eight, savvy. Savvy. A savvy person is very knowledgeable. It's a practical kind of knowledge, usually about something useful. For example, somebody can be savvy about computers, or you can say, he's a savvy businessman. Number nine, Blurry, blurry. Blurry means not clear and not very visible. For example, when you take a picture with your camera and you're moving your hands, what happens? The image is blurry. Or if you take off your glasses and you don't see very well, the letters on the page will look blurry. Number 10, fickle. A fickle person changes their mind a lot and they don't know what they want. They're very changeable and especially related to emotional things and relationships. So you can say one day she loves him, one day she doesn't, she's fickle. And children can be fickle also about what they want to eat or what they want to do. And as usual, at Accurate English, you're always learning more than one thing because that's the fastest way to improve your English. So now I'm going to read these words in sentences and I'm going to teach you to pay attention to how you connect the words together and which words you stress. Repeat after me. Number one, everyone was surprised when the mediocre team won the championship. Let's connect was surprised. And here we have three different thought groups. Let's do that one again. Everyone was surprised when the mediocre team won the championship. Number two, after being lost in the desert, the man was thirsty and famished. We're going to connect lost and in, lost in. And thirsty and famished, we can eliminate that D in the word and. Thirsty and famished. After being lost in the desert, the man was thirsty and famished. Number three, thank you for your prompt reply to my email. Let's hold a T of prompt so we don't say prompt reply. We say prompt reply. And remember, we stress the noun, so we're going to stress reply more than prompt. And email, pay attention to that. The first syllable is stressed. Some people make a mistake and they say email 
and it's supposed to be email. Let's do that again. Thank you for your prompt reply to my email. Number four. If you don't add any spices, the soup will taste bland. Let's eliminate that T of don't. We say don't add. It doesn't sound natural if we say don't add. Usually when the T is after an N and before a vowel, it often just gets eliminated. And we're going to say add any. If you don't add any spices, the soup will taste bland. Number five, please clean this filthy room at once. Let's connect room and at, and let's hold the T. Room at once. Please clean this filthy room at once. Number six, even though he was sick, he was reluctant to go to the doctor. Let's connect was and sick because there's only one S. When we have two, it becomes one. Was sick. Reluctant to. Same thing with the two T's. Only one. Reluctant to. Even though he was sick, he was reluctant to go to the doctor. Number seven. They travel to a remote island that has no electricity. Let's connect remote and island, and that T is going to be between two vowels, so it's a fast D, remote island. And let's hold the T of that. They travel to remote island that has no electricity. Number eight. The savvy businessman made a lot of money on his investment. Made a lot of money. Let's connect all of those words made a lot of money. And let's eliminate the H on his investment. And let's link the S to the I, his investment. The savvy businessman made a lot of money on his investment. Number nine. When she took off her glasses, the letters became blurry. Let's connect took off and let's eliminate the H of her took off her glasses. When she took off her glasses, the letters became blurry. And number 10. The fickle customer changed his order many times. Changed his order. Let's connect the D to the I because the H is eliminated and let's connect the S to the O, his order. The fickle customer changed his order many times. If you are already an advanced English speaker, I strongly recommend that you keep improving your vocabulary. This will take your English to that next level so that you can read English newspapers and books and you don't have to look in the dictionary all the time. But there are so many other benefits as well. There are many social situations, especially when you're talking to educated Americans where you will feel comfortable and confident because you have a rich English vocabulary.